In this problem solving screencast, we're going to be looking at converting a Newman projection into the IUPAC name using the nomenclature rules um, that we learned in class. So we have five examples here of, of different Newman projections that are in the staggered conformation. So to preface this problem solving session, we need to um, be cognizant of the fact that the Newman projection is always looking down a single carbon-carbon bond. So in this first problem here, we're looking down the axis of a carbon-carbon bond. The front carbon, in this case, has three hydrogens as the substituents. The rear carbon has two hydrogens and then an ethyl group as the substituents. So if we go ahead and count the number of carbons we should have in the chain, we should have one for the front, then two for the rear, three, and four. So this molecule is going to be butane. And we're actually looking down the C1 to C2 bond. Moving on to the second example, you can see that now it's a little more complicated. The substituents on the front carbon are a tert butyl group, a methyl group, and a hydrogen. On the rear carbon we have hydrogen, chlorine, and then an isopropyl group. So this one's not as straightforward as the butane. So what helps as an intermediate step in determining the name is actually drawing it in the line, uh, bond line formula or wedge dash uh, formula. So let's go ahead and um, start that process. Let's first draw a carbon-carbon bond. So we're going to approximate that or use that as the carbon-carbon bond axis we're looking down. So this is, we're going to use this left carbon here as the front carbon, this carbon here on the right as the rear carbon. So we can see that if we convert to the, the, the wedge dash formula, we have a methyl group and a hydrogen. So the methyl group is going to come out towards us. We're going to draw that with the wedge. We're going to put the hydrogen behind as the dash. And then we have this tert butyl group. So we have the front carbon going to this carbon and bonded to that carbon is a methyl, a methyl, and a methyl. That branching group is called a tert butyl group. Now on the rear carbon, we have chlorine, isopropyl, and hydrogen. We can see from this staggered conformation of the Newman projection that the tert butyl and the isopropyl group are anti to one another at 180 degrees. So that's going to assist us in drawing the wedge dash. So we have the tert butyl group. The isopropyl group we're going to draw in the plane anti to the tert butyl. So here's the, the CH carbon here, and then the two methyl groups. So then off the rear carbon we have our wedge and our dash. We can see that the relationship between the chlorine and this methyl is 60 degrees. We can classify those as being gauche. Since they're on the same face of the molecule, we're going to draw the chlorine projected out and the hydrogen projected back. So now we can need to convert this structure into the name. We can see that the major functional group is going to be a hydrocarbon. We're going to name the chlorine as a substituent. 
So let's go ahead and determine what the longest carbon chain is. We have, we'll start here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have a C6 parent that's going to be hexane. And then if we look at our numbering, at carbon two, we're running into two substituents, so two methyl groups. We have a methyl group at carbon three and a methyl group at carbon five as well. And then a chlorine at four. So chlorine takes precedence in terms of the uh, alphabetical order of the substituents. So we're going to name this as 4-chloro hyphen or dash. Then we're going to name the methyl substituents. We have four of them. We have two at position two. So two comma two comma three comma five then a hyphen. Since we have four methyl substituents we say tetramethyl. And then we determined our parent was hexane. So the overall name is 4-chloro-2-2-3-5-tetramethylhexane. Let's go ahead and look at this next example. So we're looking down the front carbon atom. The front carbon atom has three fluorine substituents. The rear carbon atom has two hydrogens, so we're not going to draw the hydrogens in, and it has a methyl group bearing three bromines. We'll draw in the bromines. If we number the longest carbon chain, we see we have one, two, three carbon atoms. So therefore, the parent is going to be a propane. And we're going to name the halogens as substituents. Since bromine is, is first alphabetically, we're actually going to number the compound as 111-tribromo. So let's go ahead and start our process here. We have 1, 1, 1. There's three bromines, tri, bromo. Our next substituents are on carbon three. So hyphen three, three, three. Trifluoro and all one word. I'm going to run out of space. Propane. So these numbers tell us how many carbons are in the chain propane. The actual numbering starts with the bromines in terms of the alphabetical order. B comes before F. So 111-tribromo-333-trifluoropropane. Three, 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 so this fourth example is a little more straightforward than the second example because we can go ahead and, and count the number of carbons in the chain because the, the, the substituents have no branching. So if we're looking down two carbon atoms here, we can see that the rear carbon atom has two hydrogens and a bromine. The front carbon atom has two halogens and then an ethyl group. So that's a total of four carbon atoms. Let's go ahead and, and draw in our line formula here. So there's our four carbon atoms. And it turns out we're actually looking down C2 to C1. So if we number 1, 2, 
three, four. This is the perspective that we're looking down. It's down C2 to C1. With that in mind, carbon 2, we have a wedge coming out towards us, a dash going behind the plane. The chlorine is going to be coming out towards us. The fluorine is behind the plane. And then we can draw in the bromine in the plane of the board. So with our numbering scheme, since the only substituents on here are halogens, we're going to name this as a C4 or butane parent. And then the halogens are, are named according to alphabetical order. So we're going to have one bromo, dash two chloro, dash two fluoro and then our parent butane. So moving on to our, our last example, we can see that the front carbon atom has a long carbon chain that has branching. The rear carbon atom has two carbon chain, the ethyl group. So we need to convert from the Newman projection into the wedge dash to get a better feel of how many carbons are actually in the longest chain. So I'm going to draw the axis that we're looking down as a straight carbon-carbon bond. Then I'm going to draw the left carbon as the front carbon. We see that it's going up into a CH2 group. That CH2 group is bonded to a methyl, which is bonded to two methyl groups. So here is a tertiary carbon bonded to two methyls. We can see that the relationship between this isobutyl and this ethyl group is 180 degrees, so they're anti. So therefore, in our, our bond line drawing here, Here's the isobutyl group. The ethyl group is coming down like that. So what I'm doing is basically we're looking at the Newman projection from a different perspective. So here's our, our carbon number one. If we draw in our wedge and our dash, the hydrogen is going to be coming out towards us. The bromine is going to be behind us. Carbon 2 here is going to be behind. And you can see that there is a gauche interaction between the two bromines. So they have to be near one another in this drawing. So they're both wedges. And then the hydrogens are also gauche. So they're both projected out towards us. So now we need to count the longest carbon chain. Let's start here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the longest carbon chain is C7, which is a heptane. And then now we have to determine the substituents. So at C2, we have a methyl. C4 and 5, we have bromo. So bromine is going to come first in the alphabetical order. We number those locations as 4, 5. Since there's two of them, it's dibromo. The next substituent we separate with hyphen, it's number 2 methyl. and then the C7 parent heptane. So this has been a problem solving 
screencast on how to convert from a Newman projection into a bond line or wedge dash convention and then determining the IU pack name.